Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today, we're going to be painting a scene inspired by The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. So I've gone ahead and sketched this out. I'm going to be doing a monochrome landscape for this piece. It's going to be very light in the background and get closer to black the closer to the foreground it gets. But instead of using gray, I'm going to be using a slight gray-green color, so it's going to be slightly green for the whole thing. To make my sky color, I mixed up some green and I had one of these empty aluminum tubes that I could put it in, so I managed to fill it with this much of the green I made up. That way, for the whole painting, my paint is consistent. It won't dry out on my palette because it's safe in this tube. So I took some of this with a very, very light gray, and then I'm just going to go ahead and fill in most of my canvas because I don't know exactly where everything's going to line up yet. And that way, I know it's covered. Now that this is dry, it's time to start drawing. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna find out my center point using my T-square. So I have a 24 inch canvas, so it's gonna be right at 12. And then I'm just gonna split this down the middle is going to be the very very middle top point of the castle. Next I think I kind of want to give myself some indication of where things are going to go just so I can sort of plan ahead of how tall things should be. I used that green I put in the tube to make this greenish gray and it just has more black in it than the background did. And it's really nice because it's consistent and it's the same sort of tone. It's not like too yellow compared to anything else or too blue, so that's what's really nice about being able to keep that green. It's nice and consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and start to fill in the castle. And then the other thing I want to do is the closer it gets to the bottom of the canvas, I want to have it go lighter and lighter. But that's kind of hard to do because I have so many different areas of it, and to keep it even throughout the entire areas is going to be a challenge. So I think I'm just going to paint it solid grayish green first, and then start to bring some of that in. I'm not 100% sure anything is lined up, so I have my wet towel and I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of all this extra chalk just to make sure. It's easier to see when it's not there and I have a feeling that some of it was throwing me off anyway. I finished touching up the castle, so now I just need to make it fade lighter as it goes down. So I have a soft bodied zinc white with a little bit of my green and a tiny bit of black. And then I'm just going to kind of take this and work it up the castle a little bit. In my next layer, I'm going to be doing a bunch of pine trees. And I have a fan brush here loaded up with a little bit of a darker grayish green. And I'm going to start by kind of drawing a line straight down if I can with this fan brush, like so, and just a little bit more paint. And then I'm going to use the corner, and just kind of zigzag back and forth to make a pine tree. Now as I get further down, I can use more and more of the fan brush so it's laying flat instead of just on the corner. You'll also notice that I'm not going all the way down. I do need to go down a little bit further, but I don't need to go down all the way because I'm going to have another set of pine trees kind of blocking these guys in. I've let these trees dry, now it's time to add some highlights. And I have the same color that I used for the top of the castle, and I'm just going to add a little bit of highlights onto the tops of them, using the same technique with the back and forth zigzag.
on the trees, I used the highlight like I said from the castle, but then I used both shades mixed together to make kind of this medium one down here. And then I brought my dark one back just to do a little bit of touch up. But now that's dry, so just like the castle, it's time to bring a bit of mist onto these trees. So I have that same thing I used before, which is a very, very light zinc white with a little bit of green and a tiny bit of black. And I'm just going to give the trees a little bit of mist. I finished doing my first row of trees, now it's time for the second. So just like before, I said things were getting darker the closer they got. I have a darker green here, and I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill in more of these tree shapes. So just like before, I'm going to go ahead and draw my trunk line, and then I'm going to go ahead and use the very end of the fan brush in zigzag back and forth. I've let my foreground trees dry, and now it's time to do the same thing I've done with the others, which is add a little bit of highlights in. So I kind of have a medium tone between this tree and then my base for the back trees. And I'm just going to go ahead and start to tap in some highlights on these guys, using the same technique, the same paintbrush, just a slightly lighter color. I still have the dark color I have for the trees. The one I had just used was kind of in between the two. So I'm going to use this just to bring in tiny little highlights on these trees. And I'm not going to go all the way down with them. Maybe on some of the trees, like the ones that sit in front of the others. But this isn't going to be as dramatic as the ones in the background. So you just saw I accidentally had this huge swoop in my painting with my fan brush. Now you need to be careful that you don't press too hard with your light color or you'll end up with this little crescent moon shape. So the way I fixed it is I have another brush right here and it's a smaller stiff brush and then I kind of just scrubbed at it while it was still wet and then used a little bit of paper towel to dab that slightly light colored paint water up. And it pretty much fixed it. You just need to really make sure you move quick because if you let it dry at all, it's stuck there forever. And then I'm lucky because I still have my paints. I could just repaint over it, but that's kind of a pain. I'd rather just fix it right then and there. So I just grabbed that little bit of water and just kind of scrubbed it out with that stiffer brush. So now I'm going to be extra careful I don't do that again. To finish the trees, I just need to add a little bit more mist. So I've mixed up more of this light color. The last thing in my painting is the cliff with Wolf Link sitting on top, so I'm going to go ahead and draw it in chalk pastel pencil first. I finished drawing in Link in the Cliff, so it's time to start blocking things in. I'm using a liquid black to start, and this is going to be very, very dark here anyway. And it'll give me a good base so I can start to bring in a little bit of color and value on top of it. So I've blocked in some of the darkest values. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start adding some details. This color is the darkest color I had for the pine trees. I'm just going to go ahead and draw some streaks into this, just so it's not a solid color.
Having finished the Cliff and Wolf link, I really think that this mist isn't working out for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take my fan brush and then just make more of these trees. Just like before, I'm going to take a lighter color and then add in some highlights. And we're done! We have our misty Hyrule castle inspired by Twilight Princess. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a print or a poster or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.